Good morning. Hello, everyone. This is Holly Million, the founder and executive director of Artists United. Artists United is a worldwide movement of artists in all disciplines coming together to create the largest network of artists that the world has ever seen. Our mission is to empower individual artists to create excellent art and to unite all artists to create social change. Our organization is less than two years old, but we have received our nonprofit status recently. Our programs have been launched. We're building an online platform to connect all 32,000 members of Artists United to each other. And we're reaching out and building a network in other countries outside of the United States. We have representatives in 25 different countries. We have a large national board of 45 artists in all disciplines coming together to lead the development of our organization. We have a partners program with over 70 partner organizations. We're trying to unite artists so that they can help each other and also so they can help our world. I am really excited um, to have a special guest on the show today. Um, her name is Adele James, and Adele is on the board of directors of Artists United. And she's also an artist herself and also a nonprofit executive and a consultant. And Adele has a new organization she has founded called Middle Passage Arts. I'll let her tell you a little bit more about that in a moment. But if you'd like to learn about um, Artists United or about Adele's work with us, you can visit our website at artistsunited.net. That's artistsplural.united.net. So with that, welcome Adele to Artists United Television. I'm so happy to hear, have you here on the show. And excited to be here with you, Holly, and thank you. Yes, thank you. And thank you for, the, for this wonderful um, art that you, I know you're going to show us some things in a moment, but could you please tell the viewers a bit more about yourself? I gave such a, a quick sketch and there's so much you do. I'd love to hear your description. Yeah, well, you know, I, I, um, I'm originally from Trinidad, West Indies, um, but left there when I was pretty young, but have always been fascinated and wanted to have a better understanding about the culture I'd come from. And it wasn't really something that was shared at home. And over the years, I found myself going back to Trinidad a lot. Um, and probably about 10 years ago, I was in a really significant transition in my life. Um, you know, uh, having been, um, laid off of a job and wanting something different. Um, and I happened to connect with an artist down there. Um, and, you know, just some of the conversations and I think the inspiration in connecting with him because he had always known his purpose and followed it. And I think I was just ready to look for something different. And what that led me to was how could I support him? And so at that point, I kind of took that turn to one, start to do consulting, but also working with this artist and helping him promote his work. That evolved uh, from what I was calling Caribbean art promotion to Middle Passage Arts, which it is today, with the idea of supporting and promoting the work of indigenous and undiscovered artists and artisans in Trinidad and Tobago. Um, and over the years, just discovering such a wealth of art and different forms, and yet so many of these individuals um, don't get the recognition um, and some really beautiful work. So I see my role um, now as supporting them and curating um, in order to help show this to others and working on a book uh, called Creating Like the Heart is on Fire, uh, which will feature um, the artists and artisans uh, with photos and also stories uh, told in their words. Oh, I'm just so thrilled. I cannot wait to see this book. And I know I've seen some of the art. And we also did an event early on yes. with you. We were experimenting with our online uh, ability to do interviews. And we did speak to you uh, along with the artist. Uh, and tell us his name again. Yes. So Joseph Bacchus, that was the gentleman that I met probably about 10 years ago. And um I, um, you know, I got laid off and I was like, well, I don't know when I'm going to have a vacation again. So I decided to go down to Tobago and spend a month. I just felt like I, you know, there's something about that island. It's a sister island to Trinidad. And um, I 
would go by at night and watch Joseph carve. He's a master carver, wood sculptor, but also really skilled. Um, and we had these conversations about purpose and manifestation. And um, I, I think it was the right conversation at the right time because I came back thinking, why can't I work for myself? I mean, he has been an artist his entire life and he's in his 60s now living in Tobago. Why can't I, with all the resources that I have, do that similarly? Um, and that is how um, that connection was struck and has continued. Um, and I have collaborated with Joseph on this book. So between the two of us, often we don't have a, we don't often have names. So it's been this whole letting go and seeing what the universe provides. Uh, we may not even know the village. Um, <laughs> and we, uh, you know, so I, I've had to, you know, for someone who is, you know, okay, you Google it and you can't do that down there. You got to stop at the rum shop or a couple of them. Um, and well, ask well, you gotta, <laughs> well, you gotta, right? Yeah, you know, and you got a nickname, you know. Um, so the whole thing has been an adventure, but I feel like it is. This is my way of being able to contribute and give back and show appreciation for a place that. I feel so connected and rooted to despite not having grown up there. Well, it's a gift to the world because you've already exposed me and through Artists United others to this wonderful work of Joseph. We had his art on display. You you brought his art, sent yes. his art to a gallery, the E14 gallery in downtown Oakland where it was on display and for sale. I know that Joseph also made some sales of his items yes. while they were there. So you're helping other people to be, first of all, enjoy all the beautiful things, the incredible things that the artists are making like Joseph, but also helping them to earn a living through their art and to bring it out to a greater audience, which they're, um, I'm assuming it's very isolated there and that they aren't, yeah, they don't yeah. have the resources to really do the kind of, make the kind of living that they need to through yeah. their art? You know, I would say one of the consistent things, because at this point I've probably done about 25 interviews. Mm -hmm. So I've been doing this project now and I'm in the final stages of it over a four year period uh, where we've gone and found different artists, um, men, women um, on this most recent trip wanted to have uh, East Indian artists represented. And I would say that the consistent theme, um, uh, there's a couple of them through, across these interviews, is not really having an infrastructure to support them in the sale of the work. And it's almost like, I think it's, it's maybe the, one of the gifts of not having grown up there is that perhaps it gives me a different sight about things that I think people are so, there's such creativity there and just so used to it that not really recognizing the extraordinariness of some of this work. Um, there's also not really a trust in the government to support them. And uh, so much of the energy, Carnival's, you know, is a main export for Trinidad. And yet with the creativity um, and the arts that are going on there, I think that there could be a year round focus on arts in Trinidad um, and Tobago, and that piece isn't seen. So it is, it is, I, you know, I had never done anything like this before. So I feel like my efforts are some way nascent, but that, you know, what I can contribute is, I think, my understanding of or sharing of the stories, documenting the stories. Um, you know, which is part travel log, um, part, you know, kind of rediscovering roots, you know, part history, because you, you see the influences in the work um, from the colonial period to now. So speaking of that, and I'm seeing the beautiful painting behind you, I think it would be good for people to see some examples of the art that you're talking about, because it really is extraordinary. Yeah. And if you could turn your computer and just maybe show us a little more closely, there's this wonderful painting, and I'm seeing the, the style of the dress in that, and you referenced the colonial influences. So 
for those yeah. for those who aren't familiar, you know, I I wonder if you can explain your choice of your name for your company, the Middle Passage Arts, and explain for those who aren't familiar what that meaning is. Yes. So the Middle Passage is that period, um, you know, um, for um, really the slavery during slavery, when slaves were brought from Africa to the Caribbean and other places. And a lot of lives were lost. And when you think about, you know, especially in Trinidad, um, but in Tobago in particular, many of the individuals who live there now are descendants of African slaves. And so, you know, in choosing the name Middle Passage Arts, it is a reference to one, the roots of the people of Trinidad and Tobago, but also that resilience and that creativity that to be able to use whatever is around, you know, and to create something beautiful from that despite, you know, what were the roots that got people there originally. So that really was the, you know, uh, intention. Um, and thinking about something that would really be representative. And so I think it is really acknowledgement of, you know, the power and the strength of, you know, of ancestors um, and the resilience um, and creativity. Um, yeah. Beautiful. Well, thank you so much. That's great to know the background on the choice of the name and it, it makes makes it resonates. And I see here this piece of art. If you could just uh, get your computer a little bit closer on the center, get a little closer to that, Adele, right in the center, because I know it's going to be important to, to show. How okay, that? that's good. And if uh, you could lift it just slightly. There we go. And now yeah. what is this that we're looking at here? It looks like almost like a wedding a service yes. or something. What is that? So, you know, one of the neat things about Tobago and uh, some of this work I'll show you is by Tobagonians and others is by Trinidadians. Tobago is a sister island and they're, it's very small compared to Trinidad's um, 1.3 million. It's about 60,000. And many of the folks in Tobago are descendants of African slaves. And so what you find is that the culture of the African continent has been retained. And each of the villages actually often has its own cultural identity uh, that reflects not only uh, the African culture, but also how uh, it's intertwined uh, with that period, uh, that colonial period. This is a Mariah wedding, and Mariah is a village uh, in Trinidad. And so there used to be these weddings where the women were dressed in the petticoats, the men would follow them in tails and top hats, um, you know, with the umbrellas. And so this is a piece by an artist named Dylan. Uh, he's a Trinidadian who then moved to Tobago because of, I think, the, the cultural connection. And so when I saw this, Dylan was outside at the beach at night painting. And I saw this piece and I was like, Dylan, I have to have this. <laughs> uh, and so, you know, yeah, this is the Mariah wedding. The colors are extraordinary. Just such a beautiful choice. And so it looks like watercolor. Is that, is that the medium or what are we yes. looking at? Um, it is, I actually think it is acrylic um, on canvas. Um, it, I had it framed when I got here. What I love is the expression on her face and just that, you know, pure joy. You know, it's almost like what she's experiencing, you see it on her face. Um, and, you know, she's in this moment of not even caring, you know, just really being and um, with her head thrown back and laughing, you know. Yeah. It's so extraordinary. Thank you. Oh, just a, a just a great treat to see that on this show. Thank you for showing that. And what else have you brought? I know there's some other things, including some sculpture, maybe some of Joseph's work. Could yes. you can you hold something up in front of the camera for us to see? Sure. So what I have here is a piece by Joseph. And let's see here. You might Do have I... to pick it up and actually put it right in front of the computer for us to yeah, see. Yeah, there that, you go. Oh, wow. That's wow. Wow. What is that? It looks uh, 3D. Oh, is it carving? It, it is. It's actually a two-dimensional carving and um, by Joseph uh, of a man and a woman. A lot of his work, you know, um, 
really focuses on people of African descent. And that's actually one of the things I've really liked about the work I've seen by these artists in that um, it's a reflection of, of me in the world, you know, um, and others. And one of the things he's known for is the, the texture. So with this, you know, if you were to touch the hair and you look at it a little closely, it actually has that texturing of uh, dreadlocks. But if you look at how the hair is combined, you know, at the top, it, it actually has the look of, you know, a coconut tree. So it, in a way, it's kind of a reflection of, you know, um, nature that you would see down there, but also culture. And Joseph is Rastafarian. Um, he knew and has always known that he was meant to be an artist um, and left home to go live in the rainforest uh, in Trinidad, where he worked on carving um, first with stone and then with wood and lived there for about a decade. Um, and so has really, you know, perfected his craft. This is one of my favorite pieces. And one of the things I started doing with Joseph um, was um, giclés. And oh, okay. so if you could lift your uh, computer up, we need to see the art right in the center of the computer screen to get oh. that. And there I'm reflected in it too. So I feel like I am one with Joseph's art. That's so beautiful. Oh my God, G Gicle. And yes. This is also a very joyous piece. It reminds me of the woman in the Moriah wedding. She, this is a very joyous yeah. piece here. And this one is actually a Bel Air dancer. So it is a French Creole dance uh, that you see often uh, at, you know, festivals in Tobago and in the petticoats. And so... Um, I began, you know, how I started with Joseph was taking photos of his work and, you know, um, and then um, printing them out in, in giclés um, that this will last, you know, 80 to 100 years because of the quality. So I'm going to move down. And one that I'm excited about, unfortunately, it got a little damaged, Um when I shipped it here. So I'm gonna ask it, you to pull it towards yourself, Nora, okay. and higher. <laughs> and we're gonna put it a little bit closer to you. You want okay. the, We want the head of the fish to show. Can we pull oh, it a little closer. Oh my God, I think for the viewers, they're gonna get a really good sense. This looks like a barracuda. Is that what that is? It's, you know what, it's not, I can't, you know, I can't remember what he said the name was, or it's some name when I looked it up, I did not know. But this piece is by, his nickname is the Bullhorn Man. <laughs> um, and um, it's Gavin Barrow. He lives in Tobago. And I'm not sure if you can guess what this is made of. If you take a look at... Uh, it looks like stone, but I know that can't be because you would not be able to pick it up so easily, for sure. This is carved out of uh, cow horn. Whoa, that's some big so, cow horn. My, whoa. Yes. Yeah. So it's either cow or buffalo horn, and um, you can see the tail. Um, and the detail of it, even to the gills. Yeah, it's very real. The, the scales. Fish. Oh, my goodness. And oh, the mouth. Even with the tongue. And, you know, so this is Gavin's work. And I don't know anyone else down there who's doing this. And this is something that was passed on uh from uh, Gavin's father to him. The and detail is so, extraordinary. The, every down to the, every single scale, it looks real, really, and really good. When you touch it, it actually has the feel, you know, um, of the scales. So uh, that's another piece. And I guess I should ship to some artist in um, Trinidad. Yeah, if you have one, let's see. Let's see this portrait of yourself here. This is wonderful. Right in the center of your, your computer screen. That would be uh, excellent. That, that's a really good uh, likeness, Adele. And this is a piece by Clive. And how he makes his living is um, you'll find him often in the airport in Trinidad and doing these portraits of people while they're waiting to get their planes. And this was done, we were sitting at the Kentucky Fried Chicken. <laughs> <laughs> and he did this in 
about 15 uh, minutes. Whoa. And, and actually the necklace and the earrings uh, were pieces that were carved um, by um, another artist, you know? <laughs> and so this is something he did quickly. I have seen photos of, um, or I've seen some of his work where um, it actually looks like a photograph um, and he does it in pastels, but this is what he will do really quickly as these sketches of people passing by. It's extraordinary. But if you could bring it closer to the, uh, bring whatever you have, the last one, bring it up to the computer. Okay. Or bring the computer to it. There we go. Oh, it looks like kind of like a pointillism or French impressionist art. Well, this is, you know, um, by an artist named Makimba. And one of the things that I didn't want to do because I'm not... I don't consider myself an art expert, but rather one who, um, you know, a creative who pays attention and has an appreciation. And so I let the artist tell me, you know, how they describe, you know, their work. And Mikemba, you know, um, would not call this pointillism, but, you know, that it was a, you know, a carnival painting because of the energy and the jumping up and down um, you know, during carnival and that for him, these colors represent that. And so I love this because there's so much energy in this and that one has to sort of step back and see the face and the person. Um, and the piece is called Faith um, and it is of his daughter. Uh, Makemba has been at this for a while. I mean, there are some amazing pieces that he's done. He's even had his work shown um, at the Trinidad and Tobago National Museum and Art Gallery, and yet, you know, um, still has found it challenging to really share his work with the world. Um, so this is just, you know, many of these artists, frankly, are self-taught. Um, I would say everything that I've shown you here, um, these are all self-taught artists. And the title of the book, the working title, Creating Like the Heart is on Fire, came to me because it wasn't something that these artists, um, you know, it was something that they have to do. It's like that burning that they, that, you know, that is their calling. This is what they have to do. It's that, that you know, that the, it's not a choice. Um, and so, yeah. So what I would love to know and what I think people would like to hear is what are your plans and what comes next with your project and how are you developing it further? Yeah. So the next piece of it, I think the, that I did the last set of interviews um, and um, because I realized it's been a process, you know, as I've done this. So realizing I didn't have enough women artists. So I made a trip mm -hmm. specifically for that. Uh, in this last trip, wanting to have representation by East Indian artists and artisans. And so now I'm finishing up the last of the stories. There's about five of them. Um, and then need to uh, find a publisher um, and produce the book. The intent behind that, because I think there's a way in which writing legitimizes things, but the intent for me is, you know, I'd love to be able to find someone to work with to host um, a tour of some of the works by the artist here in the United States um, and expose them. Um, I have a website. It's www.middlepassagearts, with an S, dot com, all one word, uh, where you can go and see stories of many of the artists. Um, you can also find uh, information on Instagram at the same name, www.middlepassagearts.com. Um, and there's also a Facebook page. Um, so the intent is to complete the book um, and to, you know, definitely I would do some book tours um, to share this, but also to find um, a partner to um, host um, a tour. I mean, and this is just some of it. There are some artists who work in copper, um, really amazing jewelry. They do also things that are kind of 
practical yeah. arts, like art that you make jewelry or clothing. That's absolutely. I saw the shoes that Joseph had made out of leather. They were and bags. I mean, mm-hmm. I you know bags, uh, <laughs> purses and bags and sacks I, and you know I have and, one actually on the floor. <laughs> if you want to bring it up to the camera wave it at us and everybody will be like whoa that's wild this is a uh, hand done oh it's so pretty everything and even to the the dowel oh. to use to to close, close the bag the oh bag. This so extraordinary the strap this is all oh, hand the done. buckle the buckle that's really really cool wonderful yeah. so can people find out more on the website if they were to want yes. to buy some items from the artists yes. etc Okay. Yes. And, yes. And how could Artists United help the artists as well? Is there anything in particular we would love to be able to help artists all over the world and by connecting them to the network, we're building a prototype platform where artists will have profiles and they'll be able to search and find each other. But I know for artists in some places, technology is not always accessible. The internet's not always going to work, but what can we do to be of help to these artists in Trinidad and Tobago? Well, um, I love um, what you're doing uh, right here and now um, because then it is, you know, a way in which to carry the stories um, of these artists um, and, you know, that it is something that can be used again and again. Um, I, I, I love the idea and, you know, that uh, when we did... Uh, the show with Joseph. So I, me being in Tobago um, and you at the gallery in Oakland, you know, and we had challenges, but that that is an opportunity, you know, or a, a way in which um, we can, you know, um, uh, really bring a, a bigger audience, um, you know, to uh, the artist Um so that that you know that for me um was was really important and to try that again and and now that we know how to improve it so thank you for doing that my pleasure absolutely my pleasure i'm glad to hear that it is helping and just because um the art is so extraordinary and we want artists worldwide to be able to connect to greater resources and these artists deserve to be known they need, they deserve to have their work be shown good um so adele i'm going to just uh repeat your website i would like to ask everyone please take a look at www.middlepassagearts with an s.com take a look at the wonderful artists that adele's helping to promote who are in trinidad and tobago and some of the work you can see right there over adele's shoulder is an example of an extraordinary wonderful acrylic painting um adele thank you very much for being on the show today. Thank you so much also for being on the board of Artists United and helping to develop our worldwide movement of artists in all disciplines. We currently have 32,000 people signed up online on e our email list. If you'd like to be a member, a free member of Artists United, please visit www.artistsunited.net. That's artists, plural, united.net. We also are interested to find people who would like to be on the show. If you have uh, some ideas for artists in other countries or people that have information to share, we'd love to have them on this show as well. So thank you so much, Adele, for being on Artists United Television today. Anything final you want to add? No, just thank you. And go to the website, like us on Instagram and follow us. I'll be putting more information out there. Uh, the, the latest interviews are fascinating. One of them uh, who to be featured uh, um, is a Hindu priestess. And she's one of only four Hindu priestess uh, in uh, Trinidad. Well, that was a visit we made to the Temple at the Sea, um, which they'll be featured. Um, and another is to, uh, a pottery business that has been in that family for a hundred years, um, and passed down to this young man. So check us out on Instagram. Um, yeah. Thank All you. All right. Thank you, Adele James for being on the show. And thank you everyone for tuning into Artists United Television, our weekly show featuring members of the Artists United community. 
and we'll see you on the next show. Thanks, Adele. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye.